The Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. Guy, Sharon and Clint sends Guy Williams. No, he is on official John and Ben at 10 business. So if you're in New Zealand, you can watch it on Friday night at 10 p.m. But today's podcast... He's on the podcast. He's just not here to record this bit. And today's podcast is featuring three big topics. Incest. Mm, borderline racism. And um, Dragon's Den, where Guy invents something called Guy's Dick. <laughs> no, Guy's Stick. God damn that's it. I, that's what I said, Guy's Dick. Check out the podcast. Enjoy. G-U-Y-S-S-T-I-C-K. Guy's Dick. <laughs> Shut up. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. Edge. If you had to get married to your current partner, where would it be? This, had, this is the big question that has been asked on Facebook today. If you had to get married to them where you met, yes, where would it where be? Where you met, where would you get married? So, for example, I'd have to get married surrounded by Woodstock and Bogans at the Rock Radio Station. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be amazing. It'd be I'd romantic. Probably, I'd probably have Roger Farrelly in the back just laughing the entire time. Jono is um, doing the service. Yeah, Jono, Jono was actually the MC <laughs> at our wedding. So, yes, yes, Jono would do the service. But I reckon that Clint has got one of the best ones ever for this. Clint, if you had to marry your girlfriend yeah. in the first place that you met, where would it be? Oh, at her ex-boyfriend's house. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. It's so good. And we want to know what your ones would be. So call us on 0800 The Edge or text us at 3343. Steve, where would you have to meet your partner? Where would you have to get married? married, Is that where you first met? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That would be at the casino. So you get married at the casino. Is it the Sky City (laughs) Casino in Auckland or is it the Tainui one in in Waikato? (laughs) Uh, Sky City, a bit more upmarket. Uh, sli- oh. Yeah, slightly more upmarket. By the pokey machines or the blackjack table? Uh, it would have to be the roulette table outside the Aces Bar. Ah, oh, okay. Aww, that'd be pretty cool, and then you guys could do a wedding favour of, like, roulette chips with your name on them. You could take all the money from the wishing well and put it on black. <laughs> yes. Yes, that is a great <laughs> idea. Oh, pro- I don't know if they actually do weddings in there, but you could give it a Yeah, you can get married to Sky City. Yeah. Can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. They should do that. Uh, Vil- <laughs> Vin- Vavishna. <laughs> Vavishna. Where would you have to get married if you and your... Where your fir- I stuffed that up, sorry. <laughs> if you had to marry your partner where you first met, where would it be? At an intersection in Ponsonby. Woo! Because you guys crashed <laughs> your cars into each other, eh? No, he ran into me. I did not crash. He crashed into me. Oh, oh let yeah. it go, Bavishna. Um, and he's been crashing into her ever since. <laughs> over and over and over and over. And um, if you guys did get married there, can we can we pre-crash the cars again to like reenact the moment? <laughs> we already got married last year, and there were so many jokes about the crash. It wasn't funny. <laughs> oh, that, how bad was the car crash? By the way, was it like oh, hospitalisation? It was bad. Like he rode up. He ran to a stop sign, yeah. and my car went into the opposite side of the road into a. Um, lamppost, ah. so it was completely gone. His airbags went off. It was pretty bad. Who, whose, oh. f- whose fault was it? His. He ran for a stop sign. He and, did it on purpose. And did you get, did you get Probably. together because you had to exchange phone numbers for insurance details? For insurance, it was. Oh, Unbelievable. Yeah. That's so romantic. That is so The worst cute. was trying to tell my dad that I'm in love with the person that nearly killed me. Wow. <laughs> okay, so if you had to get married uh, to the person that you're with, where you met them, where would it be? So the first place you met, and that's where you're going to get married. Give us a call on 0800 The Edge or text us at 3343. If Guy and I were a couple, we'd have to get married in the back room at Westfield Manor Car. <laughs> Don't say back, back room like that. <laughs> the back it's room. It's not like that. It's not like that at all. On a 0800 table. The Edge. We just met. Someone texted in behind Denny's in Christchurch in the car park. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, How romantic. It would have been a really late meeting, that one, if they were in the Denny's car park. Ah. We've got people on the... <laughs> what was that? I don't know. Just d- d- move on, move on. <laughs> Guy gets nervous at the idea of one-night stands. Carry on. Oh, I get the... No, in Denny's car park, one-night stands. <laughs> oh, I under the edge, Sam. If you had had to get married where you met, where would it be? Um, it would have been at Lower Hutt Psych Ward at the hospital. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, so pa- you- patient or doctor? Um, it, it was a doc- well, nurse. Um, yeah. Yeah, we were both working there at the time. Good, oh. good, good, good. Just checking it wasn't like doctor marrying a patient or... <laughs> Something yeah, like... Yeah, that would have been a bit awkward, but yeah. when we do tell people about Illegal. it, we uh, leave out the working part. <laughs> okay, that would be a good place to get married in the psych ward. That would make for an interesting invitation. I- I'm glad you kept your secret safe by calling a radio station. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Gina, if you had to get married where you met your partner, where would it be? Um, it would have to be at the dog pound. <laughs> the dog pound? Was it, were either of you working there or were you both just connected looking at a spaniel? 
No, no, actually, a puppy started following me one day and it didn't belong to anyone, so I took it to the pound and they told me they were going to put it down, so I advertised it and he came and adopted it and had my number from that. Aww. Are you guys still together? Um, yes. And do you guys still have the dog? Yeah. <laughs> when you get married, will your dog walk down the aisle with you guys? He would like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is it annoying for you because you were trying to get rid of this dog um, in the newspaper no. and then you, the guy who took no, it, it ended up living I, with you I and now you still got the dog? It, but I couldn't have a dog. Ah. Ah, and now you get the best of both worlds, Gina. Shannon, where would it be for you? On Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> so how would your wedding ceremony work? Would it be like... Shannon, swipe left if you take <laughs> boyfriend's hand in marriage. Yes, no, I don't know. I do not know how that's going to work. Where did you have your first day after you met on Tinder? Oh, at the beach. Oh, yeah. well, you've got a great first wedding then. I now pronounce you a perfect match on Tinder. <laughs> Yay! Yay! You may kiss the screen. It's good to see that our Tinder has worked out for people. And Penelope, you are the last one. If you had to get married where you met your partner, where would it be? I would have to get married in Rolleston Prison. In the prison? Wow. You have to explain this one, Penelope. Tell us the story. <laughs> Well, I was visiting somebody, and Rupert was visiting somebody, and that's 35 years ago, and we are still together now. Yeah, I thought this was going to be like a prisoner and female like pen pal situation, but I'm so glad no. it's just turned out being a visiting situation. <laughs> yes, straight out visiting, and that is the truth. Penelope, this is like a 35-year-long conjugal visit. Well, it's been great. <laughs> 35 years of absolute bliss. Yeah. <laughs> at, at least if you got married in the prison as well, the colour scheme's kind of easy because there's not too many, like, crazy colours in there. No, there's not. And we would stand <laughs> out in the crowd because I'd have my bride There's down. so many... Most definitely. There's so many marriages at prison, the old ball and chain gag that can be made, <laughs> but I'm glad you guys are happy together. Does the bride wear white or orange? <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably have the arrows on. Yeah, that is a good one. Wow. There are some some that have come through on the text machine as well. We've never had so many texts for anything, I don't think. But, is it, um, uh, wait, is the text machine blowing, blowing up? up? The text machine's <laughs> blowing up, guys. And uh, I've picked the worst ones. Danger, Danger Nightclub in Whangarei. Oh, oh I've I, had a rough night there. I hope that they met in the cage that so you get to dance like a sluz in there as well. Yeah, it's sad that we've both been there, but yeah. I've been in the cage. We met the Merry Merry Dragway. My girl and I met at a funeral home. Ooh. Okay. I met my fiance at the Shell petrol station in Turangi. <laughs> we met at a liquor store. He was working there and I had a drinking problem. <laughs> <laughs> probably shouldn't share that story with your kids, eh? No, probably uh, not. Well, thank you for letting us know all the places that uh, you would get married. And we would hope that we would get invited to your wedding because we talked about Guy, it. Hi, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. I am stuck in a vicious marketing mailing list cycle that I can't get out of. What, what do you mean? Like, who's it with? Uh, it's with Jeans West. Great. Yes. And years and years and years ago, I went to Jeans West to buy some pants, um, and I signed up, somehow I've signed up to their mailing list, Yeah. and now it's a text message mailing list, so they keep texting me with, like, promotional offers all the time. Oh, uh. mate. And down the bottom it says, to opt out, text stop to this phone number here. So I've done that, but every time I text the <laughs> opt out number, instead of opting me out, it re-registers me on the <laughs> mailing list. What? Genius. And so, rather than just staying on the mailing list, every time I opt out, I'm on it twice, and then when I opt out again, I'm on it three times. <laughs> so, for example, Jeans West sent out a mail out today with some promotional offer, um, forget what it was, but because I'm signed up, I received it five times. <laughs> what? The that's Jeans actually... West one day sale. That's amazing. That's so good. Isn't that illegal? Like, if you unsubscribe <laughs> yes. to something, you're not allowed to get anymore. out of it. Jeans West is trolling you. Because all you can do to reply to these, these evil computer things <laughs> is text the keywords. That's the only thing that work. And I've tried texting at abuse before, like... <laughs> <laughs> At least you are now you are now subscribed five more times. <laughs> Leave me alone, Jeans West, you beep beep. But nothing works and I can't get out of it. They so, just really want you to buy some jeans. So basically you bought a pant a pair of pants. Yes. They said we'll give you a fifteen percent discount if you sign up to this. Yeah. And you were too stupid not to give them a fake phone number. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I always give them 021-1111111. And just take the discount and run. Yeah, basically, or, never to be seen again. Or just say you can't remember your phone number, or you don't have a mobile. 
<laughs> if anyone from Jeans West is listening right now, please, I'll buy I, whatever it takes. I'll come and buy some pants. Maybe Just you please could, stop texting me. Maybe you could buy a franchise store. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way to get out of it, is to the, buy a franchise store. The only way to get out get. is to buy your own jeans with. <laughs> the only way out is to go further in. <laughs> yeah. anyway. He looked at his options and it was like, get a text <laughs> or buy a franchise. <laughs> if you want to know how we can get you to Australia to meet Katy Perry, we'll tell you next. This is Demi Lovato. Let it go. Would you like to give away some jeans as well <laughs> from your new shop? I can't get out of it. <laughs> and we've got Taylor. They keep texting me. Well, we've got Taylor. We've got Taylor on the phone now from Jeans West. Now, Taylor, what what can he do? He needs to unsubscribe from the email. Do you get an email? No, I only get the text message. A text message, so you don't get an email. No, no email. And the number that it wants me to text is an Australian number, and I can't yeah. get out. <laughs> well, I'm on my way to work now, so I can try figure it out for you. Just, just <laughs> Google me in the Jeans West database. Just go to Jean, or whatever her name is, who runs Jean West. <laughs> go to Mrs. West and say, look up Clinton Roberts in the Matrix and delete yeah. his phone number. Yeah, I will. I can actually unsubscribe you from work. I'll do whatever it takes. Like I, like I said, have you got some acid wash in there at the moment that you need to move, some dated stuff? <laughs> I'll buy whatever it takes. Just please leave me alone. I'll look you up in the system when I get to work and I'll unsubscribe you. Okay, thank you. Oh, what a nice lady. Hey, Taylor, we are going to send you a a prize for helping Clint out because it's really been bugging him, which has then been bugging us. So thank you for saving us. Make sure you leave your phone number, though. And we're going to text you five times a day with your new (laughs) phone number. Uh, uh, uh. (laughs) <laughs> okay, good result in the end. Go. Guy, Sharon and Clint. Itch. Let's open the Dragon's Den. Guy, Sharon and Clint's Dragon's Den. We asked Chang to put a dragon on the <laughs> intro of that thing. Is it, Chang, is that Godzilla? No, King Kong. <laughs> it's a dragon, eh? Yeah, it's just a dragon. So, so welcome we- to the Dragon's Den. And what we're doing here is we think there should be some things that are invented to help people in everyday life, and we want to know what yours are. So, If we had a really good one, we could make it into something. We could go partnerships with people. Yeah. I'd invest my own money into it if we had a really good idea. Yeah, but yeah, there was so much effort. If you do have one, though, <laughs> call us on 0800 The Edge or text us to 3343. I would like to make a robot which then... Folds back and slides underneath your bed, but when you need it, you push this button and it comes out, and it puts your duvet in a in your duvet cover because that is my biggest pet hate in the world. There is one thing that every single time I have to do it, it makes me so angry, and that is putting a duvet in a in a it's duvet so cover. It's so easy. Here's what you do: it's you, the worst. You hold up the duvet cover. You then use the duvet cover. You 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 hold the duvet. You squirm inside the duvet cover yourself <laughs> like a worm. You stand up and then you fall forward onto your bed. See, and that is really easy for someone that. It's really tall with long arms. Life I have hack. small arms. On to the next one. We, we want some more robot. ideas in the Dragon's Den. Let's open the Dragon's Den to listeners. Oh, 800 The Edge. Paul, what's your idea? Um, I thought a uh, GPS system on, like, your pets or... Great idea. Even your keys or something like that. And, oh. and have, like, an, have, like, an app on your iPhone. Yeah. So you can yes. GPS it, sort of thing. Wouldn't, I love that idea. Wouldn't be a good one to put on your phone, though, would it? Oh, no, because you can already GPS that. Oh, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. I reckon that's a great idea. I would definitely buy that. I mean, um, it may that, or that, may already exist. That exists. It's a company called um, Tile. Tile, and you can clip a tile onto your dog's collar. Really? Yeah, or onto your keys. Yeah, oh, it's okay. really good. Yep. I'm going to Google that. Well, good idea anyway, Paul. So far, you guys are both this killing dreams. <laughs> Heidi, what is your idea? It's a dragon suit. I would really love to invent a nappy changer, and I imagine it like a car seat. And you put the baby in, you strap the baby in, and everything's done for you. And wow. then the nappy gets put on, and you unlock your baby out of the car seat kind of thing. Yeah. And fresh nappy. Basically, so, we just need a Rosie from the Jetsons in our life, because that's totally. what she used to do. Is, is, so is your idea like a robot that you insert the baby into, and it does all the stuff? <laughs> 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 it sounds dangerous. I mean, yeah. you know, like if you want to give it intelligence, sure. But <laughs> what if it accidentally whips your baby's pee pee off? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's gonna be like, it's gonna be gentle with water and yeah. feather dusters. <laughs> okay, Heidi, the the idea needs work, but that's what we've got so wow. far. The idea into it. Thank you. Wow, I am working with a couple of Simon cows. This afternoon. is Dragon's Den. This is Dragon's Den. It's tough. It's not easy. We're gonna get a yeah. million dollar it's a idea cow. here. It's a cutthroat world out there, Sharon. It's the world of business is harsh. It's just just like American Idol, like people judging that can't actually sing. These are great ideas, though. Ingrid, what's your idea? 
I think a drive through dairy would be amazing. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> Every, anything works if it's going to make us more lazy, Ingrid. That is a fantastic yeah. idea. So, I saw a drive through <laughs> bank the other day and a drive through yeah. subway. The drive through banks are really popular in America. Because people are too scared to get out of their car and get their money ah. in that. So you just have a drive through window to get your cash out or deposit your checks. And so, Americans are really lazy. But no one goes to the bank anymore anyway because it's on the internet. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, they're, they're diminishing in, in popularity. That could be my invention, banking on the internet. Already done. Bingo. Oh, damn it. <laughs> when you're um, driving around the street, sometimes it's hard to get GPS. So mine's like an extension um, pole device that you attach to your phone so you can put your phone out your window and have it high up in the air out of your car so you can get um, good reception for your GPS machine. <laughs> So what you're saying is you basically just invented a stick. <laughs> that is correct, yes. A stick. A stick. Yeah, a stick. And you just, everyone else has invented Well, duct tape, or, or it can be called the stick, as long as it works, mate. It's a bloody good idea. <laughs> Maybe we could call it Guy's Pole. <laughs> Those are... Guy's Stick. <laughs> guy's Dick. Guy's Stick. <laughs> Say it fast. <laughs> guy's Dick. <laughs> that, was, that was the joke. God, you guys are slow. Chang, don't wrap us up. Say uh, it, mate. Oh, wait, under the air. Arena, what was your idea? Hey, so um, it's for all the ladies out there, and it's a bra with a built-in pocket. Mm. So you, and the pocket has to be waterproof because you've kind of got to run with your, you know, sports bra when you're running along, mm-hmm. and you put it, got to put it in there so it's close so you can put your headphones in. So it's oh, good to have oh, your headphones. That is my pet peeve. Like, get a handbag. I can't stand when I see girls out at bars that shove their money and their um, <laughs> and their phones in their bra. <laughs> Like just get a, just get a handbag. Have, have a pocket in there so you can put it in. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Um, it Erina, is a good idea. But before you go, do you like guys' dick? Oh, Clinton, <laughs> don't worry do about it. Do you like it. guys' don't. dick? <laughs> would, would, um, I'm not going to worry about that one. The idea you had before, would you pay money for Guy Stick? No. <laughs> would no. You, no you, one would. Shut up. Can you ever up. see yourself using Guy Stick? <laughs> no, no way. No way. No one wants a bar of Guy Sorry guys about stick. that, babes. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Ali, what's your idea? Uh, yeah, my idea. Are you ready to have your mind blown? Yeah, ready. Ready. Uh, it's, uh, it, might, it might fly and it might not, but it's a uh, pimple squeezer. Oh. Ah. So you just hover it over the pimple and it does it for you. You can get no, one no, of those already, uh, babe. Yeah, so you can already, already get those. Yeah, no, tell us it how, just tell sucks us, it out. Tell us how yours works. Okay, mine was like a, a just same sort of thing as you get like at the chemist, like same as you get like yeah, the fingernail clippers, but yeah. it's like a, got a wee handle and a wee spring thing and you push it in, it's got a couple of rollers either side, and when you push it in or whatever, the rollers squeeze up and voila. Oh, yuck. Voila, you've made a bloody mess. Oh, you've made a bloody mess. <laughs> but, you know, like, it may, it may not fly because it's either too gross, but it might, because heaps of people want to pick their zits, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Oh, this, is like, this is making me feel I sick. love his commitment. I love he's into it. Good yeah, luck, mate. I think right. it's a good idea. Yeah. Courtney, what's your idea? My idea is glow-in-the-dark tent string. Yes! Wow! Courtney, that is a great idea. Have you had a run-in with tent strings before? Yes, um, Rhythm and Vines in 2012, I almost broke my leg um, tripping over, and I can imagine how many casualties there have been over the years full of tripping over tent pegs and everything, yeah. and oh, I can imagine the amount of people that just get them at a hospital. Oh, I ran into a tent string. You know yeah, I, definitely. Yeah. I'd also like to add to the glow-in-the-dark range and invent glow-in-the-dark hedgehogs or glow-in-the-dark rain uh, like raincoats for hedgehogs because I can always hear them but I can't see them and it freaks me out. Can we make guys stick glow in the dark as well? Because then then when it's dark and you're feeling around for guys stick you can find it easily. (laughs) When when you're trying to find guys stick at rhythm and vibes. (laughs) Inappropriate. Inappropriate conversation. (laughs) Move to the next one. The text machine's blowing up. The text machine's blowing up. One more Why? Lance. Why is guy's stick always pointing up? Why? <laughs> Get out of the don't worry, joke. don't worry. Come uh, on, come no. on, come on. Thank you Lance, for that joke. Lance, you've got the last idea She's in the so dragon's den. She's <laughs> Lance. No, Lance is gone. Lance, okay. save the segment. There's some great text machines. These are genuinely good ideas. Is the text machine blowing up? The text machine's blowing up. A gym with childcare facilities? That's really good right. idea. They yeah. already have those. Yeah, they do. Why'd you text that in? Stop wasting my time. <laughs> Slap. Dragon's Den idea. Edible ice block sticks. That is good. That is good. Like made out of chocolate or lollies licorice, or something. Licorice. Licorice. No, not licorice. Edible ice, ice blocks. No, sticks. that's a good one. Yeah. Um, some of them, one? some of them are not so good. I want to make a hot ice cream for winter. <laughs> isn't that just? Isn't 
they're just so <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> oh, mashed potatoes. <laughs> it is mashed potatoes. <laughs> to have a robot that no, but like a sweet thing. She means don't be, don't be, don't shut it down. That's, that's a good idea. Right, last one. Um, <laughs> some moisturizer that doesn't dry out when you're playing with yourself. No, I'm so sorry oh. about that. I'm they so made sorry. That as well, man. It's called lube. <laughs> This is, the, this is the best segment ever. I love these ideas so much. Thank you all so much for contributing your great and, ideas. And thank you so much to Guy Stick. We started the segment with Guy Stick <laughs> and we finished with moisturizer. And it it's took 20s. way longer than I thought it would. Guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. It's quite well documented that I am a white trash cracker from Nelson. <laughs> so as a result, I'm not up to date with a lot of um, customary things and stuff like that. That's why I've created... Uh, a handy new catchphrase to help people learn about some important New Zealand things that they need to know about. It's called "That's Tapu Bro." I have been <laughs> we have been arguing about this feature all day. Because it's good. I, it's educational. It's like don't I, don't sit on food preparation surfaces. That's Tapu Bro. I just I think it's risky. It's not risky at all. It's great. Give me some more context. Don't wear your Warriors jersey only when they're winning. That's Tapu Bro. <laughs> 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 Don't diss Lord. That's Tapu, bro. Join in, Clint. Oh, okay. Don't try and kiss your sis. That's, That's Tapu, Tapu, bro. bro. <laughs> um, I honestly... I'm it's a handy hashtag for educational things that people want to know about. Don't eat the last Wicked Wing without asking if anyone else wants it first. That's, That's Tapu, Tapu, bro. <laughs> a small town between Thames and the Coromandel. Coromandel. Yeah. That's Tapu, bro. Has anyone been to Tapu? Great place. <laughs> Bloody great place. Don't drive your car in a cycle lane. That's Tapu, bro. <laughs> Don't pull the fingers at the mongrel mob. That's Tapu, bro. Oh, God. Why are you pulling? Why are you? Why are you why? I'm, just, I'm just worried that people might, I don't know, get upset about this. Or now you're probably going to get... Hate you're mail. Gonna, you're probably going to get the mongrel mob Send after through you. your ideas for hashtag that, that's Tapu, bro, through to 3343, <laughs> or send through your hates to 3343 as well. Don't, Everything is welcome. I, I think it's funny, but I feel bad laughing about it. Don't speak on the marae, Sharon. That's Tapu, Tapu bro. bro. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. You guys are terrible. My favorite one is "Don't kiss your sis." It's just, a, it's just a, it's just a classic thing. That's Tapu, bro. It's hey, going to catch on. So, it's going to catch on. So if anybody does anything which is a little bit frowned upon, you just say to them, "Hey, that's Tapu, bro. That's Tapu, bro. Don't do that." So it could be like, <laughs> "Don't you hook up with oh. your, um, hook up with your best friend's ex girlfriend." That's Tapu, bro. Ah, oh. don't, don't accuse Beyonce of lip syncing. That's Tapu, bro. <laughs> that's bloody good. Did, did I do it? Yeah, that was yeah. really yes. good. Don't, don't use a fork at a Chinese restaurant. That's Tapu, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, let's see if it catches on. Oh, God. Is there a hashtag for it? Hashtag, that's Tapu, bro. <laughs> Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the urge. Um, okay, this is that story I was telling you <sighs> about. And the, the weird political idea. It's come from the ACT Party. Yeah. Um, and we don't normally talk about politics. It's just this is really weird. <laughs> no, this is something that you can't ignore. <laughs> Front page news. So they've much. got a new leader of the ACT Party. Um, his name is Jamie White. Weirdly, looks a lot like Rodney Hyde. I thought it was Bull Allen. Oh, it does look like Bull Allen as well. When I was looking at the paper, I was like, what's Bill, Bill Allen doing in there? There's so many bald white guys out there right now going, we don't all look the same. Weirdly, <laughs> weirdly, he's a bald white guy from South Africa whose last name is White, and you're like, a bit dodgy. Turns out his wife is brown, so it's old G. <laughs> oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so this is not... <laughs> this is this carry on with fair what, point. what the point of the conversation is. So, Jamie, Jamie this, is, this, is the, this is the headline for the article. Leave incest couples alone. <laughs> So he doesn't believe that incest should be illegal. Wow. So basically he's saying, and this is what, if they go to the election on this, I can't wait to see the billboards. Yeah. Um, Legalise incest. Maybe, if it's so, <laughs> hy- hypothetically, if, if they were having billboards, there could be a billboard of me standing next to my dad and oh, I'm no. crossing hands <laughs> like... It's looking all happy, but then looking at my dad's identical twin, and the slogan could be, "Yes, Sharon, you can finally hook up with your uncle." <laughs> but really, it's like hooking up with my dad because they're identical yuck, twins. Yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> so, you've thought this through way too detail. I thought the bull would just be like, "It's okay to kiss your sis." That would be fine, right? <laughs> Party how, vote how, act. How else are you going to learn? Two, kiss your sis. Two ticks act. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that it's like. Oh, I guess they're not that normal a party, but it's weird that they're like a, a semi-mainstream party, not like the yeah. weird conservative party with that Colin Craig guy or anything. They're Colin like- Craig looks like he's married his cousin. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to sue me for that, eh? He's going to sue me. Yeah, Are yeah. there actually any incest couples in New Zealand? 
Surely not. Surely no one's like, yay, this is exactly what I need to make my love complete. But would, would they admit to it? Or like, would your friends know about it or anything like that? Like, it would definitely Surely be, not. It would definitely be a shunned thing, like a... Like a Keep that, keep that love a secret type yeah. thing. Ben, Sis. the wedding would be so easy to do the guest list, though. Oh. Usually, usually, like, family takes up so much space at a oh. wedding that you'd only have to invite one family. Plus, once you announced your relationship, you probably lost most of your friends as well, so it's <laughs> a super short guest list. And you wouldn't have to change, you'd, like, go through the, like, pain of having to change your name on your one card and stuff like that because you still have the same last <laughs> <laughs> I'm just By the way, I don't endorse incest. I know it sounds like it, but it's just one of my favourite things to joke about. <laughs> Surely it doesn't happen, though. Surely it's just, like, it's a weird thing to campaign on. It's a headline grabber, but surely... Well, you spoke too soon, because we've got Ashley on 0800 The Edge. Ashley, tell us your story, pal. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, I know a girl who is with her half-cousin, and they happily admit it because they're half-cousin. But, but the story gets worse when you find out that her grandmother was dating a guy who her daughter then started dating when her grandmother left her and had her cousin. What? And half cousin. So, like, their whole, their, their whole family are just hooking into each other. Apparently it's okay in Christchurch. Wow. <laughs> it's not okay in Christchurch. That it's, is crazy. Okay. <laughs> but, but the weird thing is, is that Ashley's not the only one either. Look at all these phone Kate, calls. tell us about your neighbours. Um, they are first cousins and hooked up when their nana was dying and basically she moved in as soon as the nana passed away and then boom, next thing they had a baby together. Oh my God. Now we need to ask the baby, how many fingers and toes does it have? Because (laughs) there are so many health risks. That's why incest is illegal. Not because A, it's gross, but B, there are so many health defects it can cause in children. Like, is the the kid okay? Does it have two heads? Um, No, the kid was fine, but it just, I think it was a bit simple. (gasps) Did it have a tail? No. (laughs) But, yeah, the parents were a bit more simple because yeah, who hooks up with your first cousin, yeah. really? Yeah, it's it's, so first weird. Cousin it's like, oh, he's so good to me. Th- and the wedding speeches. Thanks so much for being there when my nana died. It was our nana. We're there for our whole family. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that is so My, my cousin gross. keeps texting me about the funeral. Do you think he's into me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so- I can't believe my cousin went. I'm so glad that I don't have any hot cousins. I'm so glad that I got out of Nelson so I could get away from all my hot cousins. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> One of the more interesting topics that we've uh, discussed on the show. Yeah. Incest. The dude from the uh, <laughs> act party, he said he actually said he regrets saying it because he doesn't want to um, embarrass the act party, but his personal belief is that you should it should be uh, absolutely fine to... Uh, m- Marry someone in your family. I he guess. thinks it should be legal. Yeah. So his name's Jamie White. Um, so I've done a bit of research. <laughs> Elections over, eh? <laughs> Don't bother with the billboard. Don't bother. <laughs> no <laughs> way. <laughs> no way. So I, I've done. A, I've done a bit of research um, into this with the help of some um, helpful texters. Turns out in New Zealand, this is going to be a bit of a bombshell. Mm-hmm. It is completely legal to marry your cousin. What? It's completely legal. You can do it. Second cousin, you can marry them too. Really? Yeah. the 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 urban ro- myth was that it was illegal. It was legal to do your first cousin, but not your second cousin. Yeah. You can you can marry any cousin you want. It's the shackles are off, guys. So we're, we're I'm going to text my cousin right now. Can I can I tell you a story about uh, someone I know through my husband? Yeah. Okay. They used to flat together. One of his old flatmates. They used to flat together, and his cousin used to come stay all the time. And they're like, "Oh yeah, your cousin can come stay. Like, is that cool? She stays for a while. She had a fight with the parents. They're like, yeah, sweet as no worries." And then they went in one night to get them when they'd like come home from town, and they went to like jump on their friend. And they walked in, and he was making love to his cousin. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, then uh, they've now since then got married, wow. and they have one baby. True love. But then they split up. But the thing that I, that's why I'm not lying about the whole. Uh, it's easy to invite everyone to your wedding because it's one family. <laughs> Did you go to one of those small weddings? I didn't go to the wedding because we weren't together at the time. But uh, yeah, amazing. Uh, married, Love, married his cousin. What a wonderful thing. <laughs> it, it, we're getting texts through. It's weirdly common. Like so many people know of people who have married their cousin or some sort of weird brother sister thing. And Brooke, your landlord is in an incest relationship. Tell us about that. Well, they're actually um, farmers in kind of a remote uh, suburb, 
Yeah. Yeah. And they own about most of the top, um, suburb where I am. Yeah. And I've been living in the south for 14 years. But, um, yeah, they've been incest cousins, really. And do you know this for a fact? You're not just slandering them on the radio? Yeah, yeah. Um, so my mum told me a few years ago about are, are, it. Are they hot? <laughs> um, they're old. Oh, so yes. <laughs> someone, just made, someone just made like a really good point on the text machine when they said family dinners would be so awkward if you guys <laughs> broke up. So like, it, imagine like asking for your like asking for their hand in marriage. Hey, Uncle Dave, is it all good if I marry Jess? It'd be so weird. At least it wouldn't be awkward meeting the parents, eh? Well, unless they didn't know that true cousins were <laughs> having a pash. Well, you've already met them because they're probably your parents. Yeah, but they'd still hate you. We got Stacy on the line. Stacy, your brother uh, married someone in your family. My brother married his first cousin twenty six years ago. Is it your cousin as well? Well, yep. they're brother and sister, so. What was your feeling when they got? What was what was your what was your take when they got married? Oh, didn't think anything of it. Really? really? Well, like, we're, it's not strange. We were all to you? friends. We were all friends. I was friends with yeah. her, and her oh. sister was my best friend. Yeah. I'm friends with my dad. I don't want to pash him. <laughs> and, and then my brother and her hooked up, and they've got two kids and one grandchild. You know what? Yeah. We, you know what we're learning from this is how oh. weirdly common it is. So maybe the ACT Party have tapped onto some weird, rich vein of um, of party support. Maybe ACT are going to be the next government with this. <laughs> They're all going to come I out of the whole think, country. I, I, hang on, I don't think them. there's that many people hooking gonna up with their family members. They're going to come out of the and be like, finally, some policies we can really get in behind and support. There, there <laughs> family is, values. Someone has actually texted and there's a word for it. They're like, are you guys being incest phobic? Uh, yeah, stop hooking up with your family. There's plenty of other fish in the sea that you're not related to. Yeah, maybe, yeah. And if they replay this radio show in 10 years' time, we're going to sound like homophobes from in the 90s. <laughs> it's going to be pretty classic, though, when it turns out the guy does marry his cousin. That was dead. I have a gay wedding with my own dad. <laughs> <laughs> Guy, Sharon and Clint On the edge One of the top stories in the paper today Was the story about Peter Williams Making up his fake tweet When the TVNZ team did their um, fake tweets section oh, No, no, their real tweets Their Twitter abuse They made up his Twitter abuse They're sorry. reading out their Twitter bullying yeah, In the light of the um, Charlotte Dawson thing, right? And he, ma- and, he, and he made up his one It's a segment they stole from Jimmy Kimmel And weirdly enough, Jimmy Kimmel's show Also got accused of making up fake tweets as well So... Peter Williams, um, like the nicest guy on television. Yeah, probably never had any hate in his life. Probably, probably doesn't even know what Twitter is. He's yeah. like the male Judy Bailey. Yeah, he probably made these up because no one's got anything mean to say about him. But what was the one that he made up? He made up, my mother always told me that people who talk slowly think slowly. You talk slowly, Peter Williams. <laughs> so it's so funny that he sat down and decided to write some abuse for himself. <laughs> So we thought we don't we don't condone online bullying, and we think that you should not do it to other people. But no. we thought that we might just do it to ourselves. Peter Williams has cracked the code because that's the easiest way to do it. Don't bully other people; just bully yourself. Yeah. So if we were to write mean tweets about ourselves, Mine how would they would go? Be, Shut up, Sharon, you fat sluz! No one wants you to talk about Beyonce again. I'll break <laughs> your face. Oh, do you think someone would call you fat? Have you ever met Dominic Harvey? It's like a daily occurrence. Oh, that's not nice. <laughs> Dom's a dick, eh? I reckon mine, if someone was to send me a mean tweet, um, it would be some... This is inviting some Twitter bullying for ourselves, eh? Oops, okay. Um, mine would probably be Guy, Sharon, and Clint. More like Guy, Sharon, and... K- yeah. <laughs> Hashtag, <laughs> every time. Hashtag, I hate him. <laughs> Dude, that, that, is, that is a pretty good one. What, what would yours be, Guy? I don't need to make mine up because I get real ones all the time. Oh, good. Well, let's hear your real ones then. Someone called Frankie Benz, at Soldier Boy for Press, <laughs> great name, wrote to me, you're pathetic, all I've ever asked for is a reply via Twitter, you selfish bastard living in your mansion with John Key. <laughs> <laughs> Neither, what he, he, you actually flat with like seven people just so you can pay rent. <laughs> Soldier boy for prayers. <laughs> He's such a good dude, eh? He also wrote. He wrote this to John Campbell, the journalist who who hardly knows who I am. Yeah. He wrote to John Campbell up for a little tag team bashing of Guy Williams. Whoa, that's pretty weird, eh? This guy's a psychopath. Did and he tag, soldier boy for prayers? Did he tag you into that when he did it? 
Here's quite a good one. He's just, he's just actually just streamed down all this hate. You're lucky it's not Guy Fawkes anymore. Otherwise, I'd Guy F-word you up. <laughs> Piece of crap. I hate John Key and his policies. What do I have to do with John Key? I love this guy that imagines... That I live in a mansion with, with John, John Key. Did you say something about John Key on Twitter or something? I normally troll John Key. I like to bully his Twitter account. Wait, I shouldn't condone so no, bullying. No. But wait, you can give the Prime Minister some crap, though, eh? Hopefully he can take it. Yeah. He deserves it occasionally. So, what? just so you know, whoever you're tweeting or Facebooking... Um, they can see it. They can see it. They're real people. And even if it's someone you go, stop online bullying. I, you it pussy. Is, can no, I say that I kind of is. enjoy it, though? I enjoy no, when people give me crap. No, you can't say that. <laughs> no, because fun. then you're encouraging it. It depends. Uh, it depends if it's pressure applied upwards or pressure applied downwards. You can give the job prime minister. He's a millionaire prime minister. You can give him some crap, but don't give a kid at your school some crap because they can't handle it. You know. All right. There's. Our I still get up every afternoon. time someone says something mean to me on Twitter or on the text machine or Facebook, or whatever. I still get really upset about it, and I've worked here for eight years. Yeah. Sorry about that, those tweets, Sharon. <laughs> no, but it will. That one tweet that someone sent me will ruin my whole day. Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the edge. Hello, Chang. Hello, Clint. Hey, guys. How are we all doing? So good, bro. <laughs> so good. So good. Now you're here, babes. Yes. I, I just want to say something. Um, Someone has ruined something for me. Who? The people who print 3D guns. Why? Because <laughs> I, I love 3D. Have you seen... Have you guys ever... <laughs> hang on. Are you a real person? Where does this come from? What, what do you mean Someone 3D guns? Someone has ruined something for you. The person who prints 3D guns. People who have a 3D printer, <laughs> printing 3D guns is ruining the fun for everyone who wants a 3D printer. Do you even oh, have so a... You, so you, you don't even have one. You no. want a 3D gun or a 3D printer? A 3D printer? Okay. Have what? you seen how cool they are? You can print cups, you can print... <laughs> Like uh, things that you play chess on, the, the chess sets. So if you had a 3D printer, the thing you'd print is a cup uh, yeah. to drink some water out of. Because <laughs> yeah. you can't pay. How much does a cup cost? Five dollars? But it would be cool That's to tell that. people. You get them for free. Well, how, do, how do you get three? Do you have to, once they print it out, do mm. you have to fold it all together? Or is the paper just like a no, block? No, 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 no. It's not paper. The, the printing material is not paper. It's like a, uh, a plastic, plastic material. Yeah. How long does it take to print? Quite a while. <laughs> for a cup, probably r- half a day. Sounds <laughs> really, really yeah. uh, it sounds really time consuming. It, it, <laughs> no one got time for that. <laughs> 3D printing your own cups. <laughs> you want to have a drink and you got to print your cup out. Nobody's I, got time to go back to 2010 either, so don't take us. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a, a couple of uh, 3D statues of myself at home. Do you? Yeah, I went to a <laughs> couple of things. Someone else is going to want them. It's a bit vain, isn't I, it? Yeah. I, got, I went to a couple of functions and, they, and they, they offered that service. I was like, sweet. Oh, sweet. I'll give these to my friends. You try to give them to your friends. Like, I don't want a picture of you, Chang. <laughs> no, it's just sitting at home. But I, if we ever make an award, we should give out a 3D statue of Chang <laughs> as the prize. I know where you're coming from, though, Chang, because <laughs> the 3D technology, the idea is that eventually they can use a printer to print a house. Yeah, anything. Thing, right? yeah. So, Shut up. How are they going to print a house no, no, of a little printer? No, that, no, They're going to build, like, a massive printer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What a, why would I'm you not just, now. Why do you make fun of both of us? Yeah. Why would you not just build a house instead of having to build a massive printer to print a <laughs> house? It's a lot harder, and same with the cup as well. Yeah, that sounds that sounds niggly. So okay. you're worried about printed gun crime? Because there is print, no people actually print guns, yeah. and all you need is just another mechanism thing when you printed the gun out, yeah. and you can actually fire a bullet. Yeah, but who cares? You can also buy a gun from a store. Yeah, it's, yeah, but in America. it's probably easy to get a gun license than it is to print a gun. <laughs> but if you print a gun, you don't have to get a gun license. Well, if you're an American, you just got to warm up. We are not in America, anyway. Sharon. We're New Zealand. If someone puts up a picture of a gun on Instagram, can I copy paste Control P and then I'll have a gun? <laughs> yeah, and also, <laughs> don't be so silly. In New Zealand, we're not going to be printing guns. People are going to be wow. printing 3D weed or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go right, Chester. We do not condone the use of drugs at no, any but point. I'm just what saying, else do I have to say? I'm Drug use saying. is illegal and a crime under New Zealand law. Guys, Sharon and Clint on the bloody edge. Uh, kia ora, everybody. Thank you for joining us on the podcast. Us. That's it done. There's no radio show like go. Radio, radio show, show not so. Radio show. We know. Everything about it is desperate. We just want <laughs> you to be a friend. So please download our podcast tomorrow so that we don't get fired. It's week five and we've already resorted to racism and incest. See you later. I'm going to go home and pash my brother. <laughs> don't have a brother, by the way. The Guy Shannon and Clint Podcast.